Welcome to Everything with Everett. This is a talk show podcast hosted by Everett McConaughey from Boise, Idaho. The purpose of this production is to share thoughts, voices, and information to further a discussion on who we are as individuals, communities, and a global society. Everything with Everett is open to all topics of discussion, faith, science, history, finances, social issues, and, well, everything. Be sure to follow, like, and subscribe. Visit everettpodcast.com for all the details. Good morning. Today is June 19th, 2022, a day known now as Juneteenth. If you're like me, this is a recent little chunk of knowledge that has entered your consciousness. Um... And you might also hear from coworkers in uh, predominantly white settings about how oh this wasn't a thing for years, you know it's it's just it's a fake holiday. It's you know they they seem to cheapen it because I feel like there's still so much that isn't known or understood about Juneteenth. Now, <clears throat> all holidays are fake. They really are, because who cares about Christopher Columbus, you know, discovering, quote unquote, a land that we would eventually annihilate its native colored people out of. So we, you know, a lot of our holidays in this country, in the United States of America, celebrate white oppression. And um, so... Whenever I hear someone say, oh, it's just, that's a fake holiday. That was never a thing for years. They're cheapening it. They are, we need to call it like it is and say, you know what? All holidays aren't legit. But they're, they're holidays because they're trying to remind us of our past. And Juneteenth is a brand new holiday officially on the federal level, but it has been around for centuries. It has been celebrated as a festival for at least 40 some odd years since 1977 on the Bicentennial in Buffalo, New York. They started celebrating it. Juneteenth celebrates the true and last emancipation. The Emancipation Proclamation was signed in 1863, but there were still people enslaved because the white people in Texas that chose to keep them in bondage decided not to tell them that they were free for two years until some North soldiers went into Galveston, Texas and said, Hey, guess what? The emancipation proclamation is real. You're free. They were enslaved for two additional years. And we're not even talking about reparations for that. Anyway, so I want to do a podcast today about the historical legacy of Juneteenth. I found a nice article to read to you that will, you know, more completely uh, provide the information and background on it. I, as much as I understand of it, interpret it, I feel like it's not my place to impose my understanding of it i want this to be from as much of the source as possible so the um, article that i'm reading is from the smithsonian from the national museum of african american history and culture it was posted on their website on june 19th 2019 so two years ago and i will read that to you now It will also be a link in the podcast description if you want to view it yourself, share it with friends and family, what have you. So I hope you enjoy and let's celebrate and acknowledge the legitimacy of June 19th. All right, so here is the article, The History, The Historical Legacy of Juneteenth. On Freedom's Eve or the eve of January 1st, 1863, the first watch night services took place. 
On that night, enslaved and free African Americans gathered in churches and private homes all across the country awaiting news that the Emancipation Proclamation had taken effect. At the stroke of midnight, prayers were answered as all enslaved people of the Confederate States were declared legally free. Union soldiers, many of whom were black, marched onto plantations across cities in the South, reading small copies of the Emancipation Proclamation, spreading the news of freedom in Confederate states. Only through the 13th Amendment did emancipation end slavery throughout the United States. But not everyone in the Confederate territory would immediately be free. Even though the Emancipation Proclamation was made effective 1863, it did not it could not be implemented in places still under Confederate control. As a result, in the westernmost Confederate state of Texas, enslaved people would not be free until much later. Freedom finally came on June 19, 1865, when more when some 2000 Union troops arrived in Galveston Bay, Texas. The army announced that the more than 250,000 enslaved black people in the state were free by executive decree. This day came to be known as Juneteenth by the newly freed people in Texas. The post-emancipation period, known as Reconstruction, from 1865 to 1877, marked an era of great hope, uncertainty, and struggle for the nation as a whole. Formerly enslaved people immediately sought to reunify families, establish schools, run for political office, push radical legislation, and even sue slaveholders for compensation. Given the 200-plus years of enslavement, such changes were nothing short of amazing. Not even a generation out of slavery, African Americans were inspired and empowered to transform their lives and their country. Juneteenth marks the country's second Independence Day. Although it has long been celebrated in the African American community, this monumental event remains largely unknown to most Americans. The historical legacy of Juneteenth shows the value of never giving up in uncertain times. The National Museum of African American History and Culture is a community space where this spirit of hope lives on, a place where historical events like Juneteenth are shared and new stories with equal urgency are told. And there's a list of different books, um, different things that you can read, uh, resources for children, um, and then social media toolkits um, to celebrate uh, June, Juneteenth. There is the other aspect of this now, now that it is becoming more widespread and known among the um, privileged white people of this country. Companies are marketing on this. There is a profit sector, much like uh, pride for the LGBTQ community. There's historic pride, which, you know, celebrates standing up against um, the criminalization of being who you are. And that happened in June. And then the corporate pride, which either happens in September because it's more money that you can make by getting, you know, bigger headliners or acknowledging, you know, the historic pride. Um, so there's an opportunity for every company to show their support for these, uh, these events but also, let's be, let's be honest, it's capitalism, and they're trying to make some money. So I wanted to play this quick little video for you. It's from NBC News, posted yesterday. I'll also have a link to this in the podcast description. It is entitled, Companies Face Backlash for Selling Juneteenth Branded Products. And it has Hallie Jackson as the host. Um and they kind of synopses of the holiday. So enjoy, and I'll be back with you on the other side. Up this weekend. And a year after, it has become a fi an official federal holiday. 
Some companies are now selling Juneteenth branded products. Look at this example on your screen, a tweet from May from this year, Dollar Tree, selling their Juneteenth paper plates and party supplies. But because this holiday commemorates the emancipation of slaves in the U.S., you got some folks that are really not happy with the what they see as commercialization of it, getting online to share their concerns. Shaq Brewster has the story. After George Floyd's death in 2020 and in the wake of nationwide protests that followed, last year, President Biden signed a bill that officially recognized Juneteenth as a federal holiday, a date that's been celebrated for centuries. After President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, word of their new freedom finally reached the last group of enslaved African Americans in Texas on June 19th, 1865. Juneteenth is about commemorating emancipation, uh, which means commemorating the history of slavery. Like many other national holidays, from Memorial Day to President's Day, some companies have begun commercializing it. Walmart recently apologized for selling a special edition Juneteenth ice cream with a label that read, Share and Celebrate African American Culture, Emancipation, and Enduring Hope. The new product received backlash on social media, and the retail giant issued a public apology and removed the ice cream from their shelves. I think if more companies had more people in decision-making positions who could help inform those conversations, they would think of, of more nuanced and I would just say better ways of recognizing the holiday. When the Children's Museum of Indianapolis started offering a Juneteenth watermelon salad, people took to Facebook to call out the museum for the insensitive stereotype. If you must profit as a company to, to do so in a way that is not offensive, that does not perpetuate stereotypes, and that really is, is, is thoughtful. Back in 2020, Snapchat released a special Juneteenth filter, prompting users to smile, to quote, break the digital chains. A few hours later, they pulled it and apologized for the insensitivity. We reached out to these companies for comment. The Children's Museum of Indianapolis responded sharing a statement saying in part, we are an imperfect institution, but we are committed to improvement. Walmart did not immediately respond to our request for comment, and Snapchat responded, pointing us to an earlier statement they released regarding this incident, saying in part, we deeply apologize to the members of the Snapchat community who found this lens offensive. Why are companies upsetting so many people with these products? I think that companies should be in consultation with members of the black community before making these decisions so that they are making good business decisions that are informed by the communities that they are seeking to serve. Shaq is joining us now. Um, and I'm so glad you did this story for us, Shaq, tonight, because I think it's it's interesting, especially in light of the weekend that's upon us here. It feels like, and the piece was, the, the point was made in your piece here, it's commercialization and it's, it's companies, perhaps it seems, not understanding the nuance here, right? And not, not having a full understanding of what this right. is about. Yeah, the concern that you hear, Hallie, is that they're taking it too lightly, that they're simply acknowledging Juneteenth as a way to simply make some more money. And, you know, it's not every company I should mention. You know, there's a tweet that I saw from Ben and Jerry's from 2019 honoring Juneteenth, saying it's the true Independence Day. Ben and Jerry's is a company that has also put its money where its mouth is. They have funded a lot of social justice movement initiatives uh, across the country. That was a tweet that happened before this was an official holiday. That was before the death, the murder of George Floyd. So this is not an accusation against every company. It's just simply folks saying, if you're going to acknowledge Juneteenth, take it seriously. And by the way, Hallie, this is a similar sentiment that you hear from members of the military community around Memorial Day. You hear it from members of the say, LGBTQ yeah, yeah. community yep. during this Pride Month. It's a familiar sentiment. So they definitely circled back on what I, you know, was saying. So my encouragement to you is to say first, thank you for listening to this episode. Thank you for choosing to be informed on Juneteenth. And now I would encourage you to step up. And when you hear someone say, what the heck is Juneteenth? This wasn't a holiday. This wasn't a thing when I was born in the, in the seventies. When you hear a boomer or you hear a Gen Xer or an uneducated boomer Gen X repeating millennial, 
and they talk about this and they say it like it's a nothing holiday. It's a something holiday and you need to stand up and tell them that they don't know what they're talking about, that they're an idiot and educate them. Because if you sit back and go, oh yeah, yeah, it was, yep, it's it's something new. (laughs) You're only perpetuating it. That is white privilege. That is why we need critical race theory. It is your job to take this information and to educate the people around you who choose not to pull their head out of their ass. Anyway, I get fired up over the smallest things. This world just baffles me. And then we all get together and sing Kumbaya at church. It's, it's amazing. God bless America. Um, All right. Well, you all have a wonderful Sunday, a great Juneteenth. Remember the reason for the holiday. Remember the reason for the the phrasing. Black people were enslaved two years longer than they should have been. And today we celebrate the fact that Word finally was told to them, you are free. And they be they began to have a life today. That is Juneteenth. It's embarrassing that that's not in our education. It's embarrassing that at 31, that's when I first heard about this. In, in Idaho, white boy Idaho, we need to revamp our education. We need to make sure that all people have their life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and freedom in our education system. We need to quit learning about, oh, how great it was to be a white, uh, white American post-World War II suburban America, you know, white picket fence, pension, one-income, heterosexual family. And we need to learn about the people that have been oppressed so that white people could have the white picket fence, so that white people could overpopulate this earth and suck up national and earth resources like it's a dollar biggie size Coke from McDonald's. Happy Juneteenth. Have a great rest of the month. If I don't produce another podcast Um, and share the word. Thank you. Thank you for listening to everything with Everett. Connect with Everett and other listeners on Facebook and Twitter at Everett Podcast. Everett would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts by emailing mystory at everettpodcast.com. You can also leave a voicemail or send a text message to 208-391-2808. Choose to listen, speak with kindness, and have a great day.